talk and we have a very healthy list of attendees. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here today and making time to participate in our child care training on all sorts of things. Uh, I am one of your hosts. I'm Diana Hagland. I'm the communications director for the Wenatchee School District. And again, we appreciate you making some time um, to be here and learn how you can support students in your care uh, to ensure that they have a positive learning experience. I have several other um, co-hosts and folks that are going to be talking to you today um, in their different areas. And so I'll let them introduce themselves as they come on to the presentation. But uh, I'm going to share my screen here for one second and bear with me because I am kind of playing multiple roles here, getting people in, admitted and managing the meeting. Um, so we're going to make this as smooth as possible. We're going to walk through some of the norms of how the meeting is going to work here in just a minute. Uh, and we'll get underway. So again, thanks for your time um, for being here and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna share my screen. And let's see here. Oops, wrong button, present. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen okay? All right, I'm seeing thumbs up out there, fantastic. All right, and again, this is a kind of a joint presentation, so we're going to be jumping around a little bit with some different speakers um, to talk to you. But again, I'm Diana Hagland. Uh, we're going to jump right into this and make the most out of the hour that we do have together. Our Spanish speaking presentation is going to begin promptly at seven o'clock. Oops, my screen doesn't. Well, there it goes. All right, so how the meeting is going to work today is uh, we already talked about just keeping your, uh, your microphone muted for the time being. You are welcome to be on camera. We would love to see your face out there. Um, we're asking that you ask any questions and you're welcome to even start now in the chat. And the chat feature is just right down on the bottom of your Zoom screen. You'll see a little chat bubble. You can uh, ask questions in there and we will be keeping track of those chat questions through the duration of the presentation today. And we will pause periodically to answer some of those questions along the way. Um, also, we are recording this meeting and we are live streaming it on YouTube as well. So if you missed something or you wanted to review something or you have a friend or a family member or uh, maybe a parent that you're supporting, we will make sure that a copy of this video is readily available on our YouTube channel as well as on our website. So our website's winachieschools.org if you're not familiar. Okay, so some topics that we're going to cover today. We've got a pretty beefy schedule for you. The first place we're going to start, though, is with our schedules. Uh, we have three different uh, schedules at our three different grade levels, our K-5, middle school, and elementary, uh, uh, sorry, almost said elementary, at uh, the high school level. So we'll review those and what those look like. We also have some different start times this year, which is a change from last year. So we'll review those very quickly. Uh, Predominantly, most of you are probably supporting some younger students, but just in case you aren't, we wanted to make sure that you had a good sense of what those schedules look like. We'll also touch on attendance expectations. So how do you attend an online school and what are the expectations um, from our school buildings? And then how do you report an absence for a child that's in your care? We'll review supply lists. So what do we need for online learning in this new environment? We'll also talk about your more traditional um, hard copy paper pencil type materials as well as workbooks and other uh, kits and materials that students may need to have access to during the day. We'll also touch on our free meal program that's currently happening in our school buildings so that you know when those times are available and how to access those free meal resources. We'll also introduce you to our family advocate team so you know who those individuals are, uh, which is a great place to go when you're in need of some help or you have some questions. And then most importantly, um, we're going to be taking you through an overview of some technology tools. So, and that means Zoom, you've probably heard of that. Obviously we're on Zoom right now, but how that works with our online classroom platform, Canvas, and then some other tools as well. So, uh, and then we'll wrap things up with some, you know, last questions that you may have, and we'll kind of go from there. Also, this presentation, uh, the PowerPoint slides themselves, we will make available on our website after tonight's presentation. And I did want to point out just down here at the bottom of the screen, we've created a really helpful document that's a fillable child care provider checklist 
that's going to allow you to fill in some information about the child that's maybe in your care, um, usernames, passwords, just some general information that would be helpful for you to stay organized and for your parents to stay organized so that you have that information you need to support um, the student that's in your care during the day. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. Um, first on the list is the elementary schedule. And again, most of you are probably working with elementary aged students. So <clears throat> our schedule did change. Um, we are at a 745 start, as you may be aware. So students are logging into Canvas in the morning and they're having about half of their day as a synchronous time with their teachers where they're receiving that live instruction. And then the second half of the day after uh, recess and lunchtime uh, is more of an asynchronous period where they're able to do some work on their own. They may have some specialist times where they're watching videos and um, really kind of working more independently. So that's how the, the elementary schedule is set up, but it does run a traditional school day. 7.45 to 2.30. Um, now you can kind of ignore up here at the top where it does say the teacher work day. That is our teacher work day. So that's when our teachers are in the building or are available to answer student questions and calls. But school does start at 7.45 and then rounds out at 2.30 daily. And we still do have Monday late starts. So <clears throat> even though we're online, Monday late start for elementary is at 9.15 and then we still end at 2.30. Jumping into the middle school schedule, and I'll move fairly quick through this one. Our um, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade all have the same, uh, pretty much the same schedule during the day. There is built into that school day what we call an advocacy period where they're meeting with um, student or uh, staff teams that are really there to support them with social emotional needs and really develop relationships with their students. The school day for middle school students starts at 1035 uh, and then ends at 245. Oh, excuse me, that's incorrect, at 305. Um, so we do have a little bit of a time change for those middle school students. Their day looks slightly different too. If for each period, they have um, moments in their day where they're getting synchronous instruction in that class period. So that live in person, but then they're also getting some heads down kind of independent work time blended into each one of those periods. And then Wenatchee High School, we've included their virtual bell schedule to give you an idea of what their day looks like. Um, the high school dove right into 100% virtual learning right away at the beginning of the school year, and they've maintained their same schedule uh, as they have uh, during a traditional school year. So first period is a, again a shift in start times. We're starting at 10:10 uh, 10, 10 with that first period, and that's on Mondays during our late start. Um, our zero period of Tuesday through Friday is at 730, which that may not apply to a lot of students, um, but first period is at 840 and then we have a 950 independent study period. Their school day ends at 330, so there's a little bit of a later start time, um, but their school day ends right about 330. So we know a lot of families have kids at multiple levels and maybe some students who are uh, older students who are supporting younger students. So it's really good for you to just have a good awareness of, of what those school days look like. And again, this information will be available for you to review uh, later. And each school schedule is posted on their website. So you're welcome to check on um, our district webpage where we have a list of all of our schools and you can check on what those daily school schedules look like. All right, I'm gonna hand it off. I think this is a no look pass to Nadia, are you covering? Yeah. Yeah, you're covering the supply list. So Nadia, I'll let you introduce yourself and take it from here. Hi, everybody. Good night. Uh, my name is Nadia Bush. I am a director of Migrant Bilingual Programs for Wenatchee School District. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here and answer your questions. Um, so far, I, have, um, I don't see any questions in the chat but you might come up with them later. So on this slide, uh, we have a sample from one of the elementary schools uh, of the supply list, which is typical to a normal traditional year supply list. And visually you can see that K2 has more items that um, school is asking for parents to prepare like scissors and glue sticks and markers and, um, 
you know, ordinary um, items. And then as um, intermediate for intermediate grades is a little less, but in the same theme of, um, you know, notebook and pencils and um, glue and colored pencils and such. So um, if you guys go to any elementary um, school site, typically um, they have posted their school supply list there on the front page. And um, it's, it's uh, something that you can find and it's nothing special, just typical items. Um, for elementary students. And secondary schools do not um, ask for supplies list as far as I know. Um, and then um, we'll, we're gonna talk about the materials that everybody um, should have at the elementary level. Diana, if you would move uh, to the next slide. So the pictures here uh, demonstrate what teachers in K-5 schools provide students with to work um, in the afternoons at the time when um, uh, after lunch, typically and after recess, the students um, have time to work independently offline. So the, the first picture here on the left, um, it says I ready math. This is the workbook um, with uh, problems and um, examples for math work to do. And um, students in elementary level all have them. So this is the uh, material they should be doing daily, regularly. And then if we move up to the orange picture, um, this is the example of a, a your turn book for reading. It's called Wonders Book. And um, in that book, uh, students will have stories and writing things to do uh, that is connected to our district adopted curriculum called Wonders. And it, each grade level picture might look different, but the, and the content, of course, different. But um, this is another book that they should have with them. Um, when they come to you or it should be, um, if they don't have it, then the teacher can give the, this book to them, which is, um, we buy for everybody. Then the red picture is the um, Maravillas. It's a, 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 a twin of a, a Wonders book, but for students who are learning Spanish in the elementary schools, we have uh, four schools with Spanish classrooms and it's all to it's called to turno and it's the same as your turn which is develops their reading um, skills and writing and at the top there it says wonders eld this book um, if you have students whose parents speak spanish at home or students who learn spanish first before english most likely they are part of our bilingual program and um, this is a supplemental program. So in addition to Wonders books, students are given this Wonders ELD book. It's a, a practice workbook where they have assignments connected to, again, our reading curriculum Wonders. And so this is another material that should be in their backpacks. Again, not everybody will have that Wonders ELD workbook because not everybody is in the bilingual program. Um, and that's the examples from elementary. At the middle school, um, if you guys have middle schoolers, we have big ideas for math um, and springboard for um, language arts, core curriculum. Um, but we assume that the older kids, you know, know what they have and the, the textbooks that they're required of them. Diana, and I think uh, the next slide, um, I'll pass it to Stacy who will talk about the attendance and the requirements for that. Oh, thank you so much, Director Bush and Director Hagland. Hi, everybody. My name is Stacy, and I get the honor of working uh, in the Wenatchee School District. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, for about 10 seconds, about attendance and reporting absences. It's exactly how we used to do attendance and reporting absences prior to COVID. So if a scholar is going to not be in school, then we, I'm sorry, that's my dog that's sneezing in the background. If a scholar is not going to be at school, then please uh, just buzz the, the office in which 
which the scholar is supposed to be going to school, if it's Washington Elementary, give them a call and let, let them know that that child it will be absent for the day. What would be an okay absence would be if somebody is sick, if somebody has a doctor's appointment, et cetera. So other than that, we are just so happy to serve your scholars every single day. We're showing up for instruction and we're so excited that the scholars are showing up for instruction as well. It's attendance as usual, it's reporting absences as usual, and as usual, the Wenatchee School District is honored to continue to partner with you. So I'm gonna go in to pass it to the next individual. I believe that it's uh, Oscar who's going to be talking to us about tech support or it could be another teammate. Because I was just looking at uh, Director Hagland and her face looked like you're passing it to the wrong person. <laughs> no. I think we are handing this off to our expert, Oscar. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because uh, here in maybe just a second, well, I'll review what's on the slide. And then he is gonna give you some real tactical know-how and walk you through um, quite a few things. Uh, most important thing to note on this slide here is our tech support phone number. And I know Oscar's gonna to touch on this. Um, but it's really important that if the student you're supporting during the day is experiencing um, technology issues or if you're having challenges with internet connection, and we'll get into that a little bit more, um, call tech support. They're ready to help you. You don't have to be a parent to make that phone call. Uh, and a lot of times issues happen during the school day. So we have, you know, intermittent challenges that happen uh, with the technology periodically, but tech support is here to help you. So make sure you write down that phone number. We have it on our website as well. And there's a little button on the website for tech support. And I'm not trying to steal Oscar's thunder at all, but we also have some live uh, tech support at Columbia Elementary from 11 to one. So if you prefer to speak to a human being in person, you can always pack up that kiddo in the car and drive them to Columbia for that time where you just need somebody to, to look at the device or whatever it is that you're running into. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Oscar, who's somewhere on my screen here, uh, and stop sharing so that he can take it from here. All right. Well, thank you very much. Y'all are too kind. Uh, so my name is Oscar, and I am the tech support specialist uh, uh, at the Ranchi School District, and I uh, have a very unique opportunity to serve the community and technology. So it's been a very fun ride. Um, so just let me share my screen really quickly. Um, I'm going to basically walk you through um, our different uh, platforms and what how we use it. So first of all, I'm going to start off here in our Wenatchee School District uh, website. Uh, you can access that by going and typing in wenatcheeschools.org. This will take you to our handy dandy Website, uh, as you see here, uh, scrolling through, we have different information like today's uh, Virtual School 101. As it loads, uh, there's different information on, uh, on meals and uh, di different things. There's also, uh, as you can see, there's a banner here with our tech support. Um, we are available from seven in the, in the morning to seven at uh, night, uh, Monday through Thursday. And Friday, we're available from seven to 3 p.m. Uh, so give us a call and uh, we'll someone will get in touch with you and we can try to help as much as we can to uh, help work some of those uh, troubles out. We also have, like uh, Deanna said, uh, we have that live tech support uh, drive up from 11 to one. That's also Monday through Thursday. Um, so here on our Wenatchee School District webpage, I'm gonna kind of walk you through a few things, a few tools. Um, here on the right hand side, there's a little question mark that says tech support. Um, so if you don't know where to begin, a good place to begin is the Wenatchee uh, School website. Click on this tech support button. We'll open up a new link. Um, in this link, we have different uh, guides. So we have our tech support, which gives you all our information of what we're doing uh, in regards to tech support, Canvas help, uh, just in case you want a little bit of help with navigation and any type of Wi-Fi information. This includes a map of uh, public hotspot areas as well as uh, you know the schools. Uh, so if we walk through, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of our, our tech support page. Uh, if you go through this tech support page, it gives you our phone number. Uh, and right here, just in case you forget, is our times, our schedules um, for phones. You scroll a little bit down, gives you our drive up support. This is done at Columbia Elementary only. Um, so, uh, you know, feel free to come by between 11 and 1. You don't have to give us a call. You can just show up. Um, so that's a lot of great information um, if in case uh, you have questions and not sure uh, where to begin. Um, so now I'm going to jump into uh, what is the actual virtual learning. Um, so most, I'm um, hoping most students have a school district device. 
uh, if they have a school district device, uh, once they log in, they will log in to this uh, Clever page. I'm not sure if everyone uh, is familiar with this, but this is basically our big app center uh, where all our apps are hosted. Um, so when a student logs into their Chromebook uh, with their email, the first page that will open up is this Clever page. Um, and through Clever, they will see the different apps that the school district has provided for them. Typically, you'll see Canvas, which is our learning management system on the top. Um, if you don't, you can always scroll down a little ways and sometimes uh, you'll see it where it says core tools. Usually if you see it on the top, it's because uh, it's got favored. Um, so once you go to Clever and uh, you locate Canvas, which is our learning management system, uh, it will take you to a different page. Um, usually it'll just automatically load, but for me, I have different users. So I'm gonna be logging in as a student. Um, and so this is like the main, this is the main Canvas page. Uh, if you go to dashboard, you'll see their teacher along with the specialists. Um, typically in the morning when they log in, they will click on their teacher's page. Uh, once they click on the teacher page, it will take them to their home uh, page. Once here, uh, if you scroll down, most teachers will have a link. Um, every teacher's page is different. Um, so this might not look exactly like uh, the student um, that you're looking at, but most teachers have very similar uh, format. So they'll have a Zoom link, whether it's in blue letters, um, they'll have a Zoom button somewhere. Once you click that link, that will connect you to the class. Um, that's highly recommended um, way to do it versus going to uh, through the Zoom app and trying to pin in that ID number. Sometimes that can get a little flaky. So the best way to do it is by uh, via Canvas and just click on that link and that will directly uh, take you to um, what what the, what the meeting is for that synchronous learning time. Um, so um, that's a little bit about Canvas and how they um, they will log into Zoom. As you all know, we're using Zoom now. So the Zoom meeting is gonna be very similar to what we are seeing in our screen. Um, so I'm just gonna share a little bit of the buttons. Um, so this is kind of what you see at the bottom of your screen, even possibly now. So this is what the students will be seeing. Um, so on the left, we'll see the microphone where you can mute or unmute yourself. Uh, to the right, we'll see a video button where they can show their video, hide their video. Uh, we have a participant so students can see. Uh, we have a chat. I'm not sure if that's a feature that's uh, turned on for students. Deanna, uh, Nadia, does someone know the chat feature is on for students? No, I don't. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so these are. this is kind of what they'll see on their bottom. Uh, they won't see as many, um, they'll see less uh, options. So kind of an idea of what Zoom might look like. Um, and that's a very, very basic overview um, of how students will log in. Um, so just to kind of go back, they'll log in through Clever. Uh, from Clever, they'll get into Canvas. And then from Canvas, um, they'll be able to find the link on the teacher page and uh, click on that link and they should be able to connect. Um, so there's also different things that they can look at in the page. Again, every page is different. Um, so the buttons on the left hand side might be a little bit different. Um, here we see that there's announcements buttons, modules, so they can see their homework. Um, and so that's kind of uh, how it is. Again, if they go to back to dashboard, they can see all their classes. Uh, they have the specialists. So for example, they have library, uh, they have music, they have art uh, and PE. Uh, and each class has their own assignments. Um, so for example, here we'll click on library um, and I'm assuming that the specialist will up be uploading this on a weekly basis um, for the students. As, um, with that being said, the other thing I'm gonna touch on is Remind. Um, so Remind is a messaging app that's used by the school district. Um, most, mostly guardians and students will be on that list. However, uh, if you are a caretaker and would like to receive some of those messages, it's best to have uh, contact the parent to contact the teacher so then you can be added on uh, to the class as well. Um, in case the student is using a personal device, I will go through how to log in in a different way um, just because we understand that sometimes students don't use Chromebooks. Uh, in the case that a student is using a personal device, uh, they are recommended to go to their um, school website most school websites will look the same as far as uh, the banners go up here. Um, so the student will click on uh, students and then they have this blue button that says clever, clever portal login. 
And that will also allow them to get into Clever uh, so then they can get into their Canvas course. Um, with that being said, any questions? I know I'm kind of going through this very quick. Oscar, we do have one question from the chat to Leah. Thanks for posting your question in there. And um, perhaps you may not know the question or the answer to this. Um, perhaps Stacy Bain might be able to chime in too, but uh, Seesaw. So it looks like YMCA staff are maybe having some students uh, have assignments in Seesaw. Is that in the portal? Um, can you touch on that? Are you familiar with that tool? Or Stacy, do you want to chime in? I'm not too familiar with uh, Seesaw and how that works in the Clever portal. Um, I'm not sure, Stacy, if you know. It's like they're struggling to find where that's at. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you know, the Wenatchee School District educators are very ambitious in the way in which they approach learning and teaching. And so we're always having individuals do um, some fun things in their classrooms. So Seesaw would be one of those extra fun things. So if you would not mind just uh, private messaging us the school in which this is occurring and potentially the classroom, then we can just give you all of the information that you need to be successful. All right. Any other questions from the chat right now? Or Stacy, is there anything else you would like to cover uh, in regards to Canvas that would be helpful for our child care uh, and care supporters on, on the call today? Oh, sure. Thank you so much. And Oscar, wow, way to go. Fantastic, fantastic uh, job explaining everything. Uh, so I like to think, we like to think of Canvas as the virtual classroom. And just to build upon what Oscar was mentioning that when we go click into a class such as uh, just a, the fifth grade class in general, uh, yep, there you go. Uh, the thing that's always most important to navigate to would be modules. Uh, the reason why that's important is that's where all of the learning occurs. So we should see what people are learning about, uh, where, where, what the assignments are, what the quizzes would be. So that would be in modules. So the only thing that I like to think about is that uh, we try to find modules after we click into the dashboard. So you'll log in and, and the scholar will be at their dashboard. And then from the dashboard, they click into their classroom. If you want to get right to the heart of learning, we just click straight on modules. It's in every class. So that's just an easy navigation tool in terms of where the heartbeat of learning is. Oh, and then also you can message um, your teachers also through Canvas typically uh, in that inbox. And then also as Oscar was mentioning, remind. So just lots of opportunities to have two-way communication. Another thing that I would like to add um, to illustrate the tech tools inside the Clever. Uh, when Oscar uh, showed the Clever page, there were options for iReady and Lexia. These are the online programs that uh, students are using um, with the direction of a teacher or independently um, daily. And um, they can do it in the afternoon um, in a synchronous time block. And right now, um, this week and last week, it's a time to, I believe until October 2nd, this is the fall testing assessment window. So um, students are being um, tested um, for math and reading through iReady, which is math. Um, and also we have iReady reading um, built in assessment in there. And then Lexia, this is uh, the, another supplemental online program to teach them foundational reading skills. Um, so this is something that if you um, notice students are doing, then that's what uh, we encourage them to do. Okay, perfect. Are we ready to, to move on everyone on the team? Because I'll get back in and share my screen and we can get back to our slide presentation. Thanks, Oscar. Thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Nadia. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reshare my screen again. And we'll jump back into our presentation. Okay, so everyone's favorite subject lunchtime. <laughs> 
Uh, we are proud to uh, be offering free meal service for any child age zero to 18 in our community. They do not have to be attending or enrolled Wenatchee schools, so it can be any child. Um, for many of you, we know that you care for little, little kids, and you're welcome to bring them to uh, any one of our school sites that are serving meals, <clears throat> which is pretty much all of them, with the exception of Westside High School, Wenatchee Valley Tech, and Valley Academy. From 11 to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday daily, you can come by and pick up a nutritious prepackaged breakfast and lunch um, for children in your care. You do not need to have a photo identification. You do not need to be their parent. Uh, you just need to be a caring adult that can um, come to the school and pick up those meals. And the kids don't have to be with you either. So those are really important things and really does help um, every day and not having to necessarily pay for meals or um, prepare meals that you can come to any one of these schools and pick up a meal. And also kids don't need to go to their the school that they attend to pick up a meal. Again, they can go to any one of those. Um, one deviation of that schedule slightly is from 11 to 145 at Pioneer and Foothills. That's when their meal service <clears throat> starts and ends. They have an additional 45 minutes in there just due to their daily schedule. Um, if you have <clears throat> excuse me, any questions about meals, you can contact our nutrition services department. They're always happy to speak with you. Uh, we do plan on having the free meal services uh, through federal government funding through December. After that, we're not really sure we may need to be returning back to um, the traditional pay model, but many of our elementary schools, uh, middle schools, and um, actually none of, our, none of our high schools at this time uh, do qualify for free meals. So most of the students at uh, those locations would still continue to receive free meals if they qualified under one of those school programs. Um, but for time being now, it's a great service and we would love to see uh, more students come out and take advantage of uh, the wonderful meals that we do have to offer. Any questions on meals? Burning questions? Okay, perfect. We're going to keep moving along. All right, Nadia. Okay, um, this slide illustrates our wonderful crew of specialists, we call them family advocates. And uh, these are the people who know a lot of uh, community organizations and names in the Valley with resources, such as transportation, health, uh, supplies, um, food banks, um, you name it, they are savvy at navigating what it's available for families in need to remove those barriers. And I'm not gonna read off their names of that um, slide, but know that when you have a, a need um, not related to technology, but anything else, like um, um, different uh, problems uh, like social emotional, um, needs or uh, financial needs or interpreting needs or and anything. Um, these are the people who are also bilingual. Um, they work at school all day and um, you just need to ask, can I speak to family advocate? And they will um, be a wonderful resource for you. Um, they have good relationships with families and students and staff and, and also our community agencies and partners um, and um, we have a couple of organizations uh, um, internally such as after school program and cafe that offer tutors um, right now so um, they know of that and so if uh, students in your care need some tutoring then they can connect and um, consult on any issue. So I think that's the end of our slides for today. It is, I, that's the final one. We whipped through that really fast and I would uh, venture to guess that we probably have some questions out there. So uh, we can spend the last bit of time that we have together uh, answering questions that you might have out there attendees. So feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and fire away with your questions and we'll help to uh, answer those as best we can. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Natalia from CAFE. Hi, Hi Natalia. Natalia. Uh, I have a quick question. So um, we're going to be offering the, like, the tutor program in October. But um, my question is, how would we access or know what the students' assignments are? Would we ask the parents and then the parents ask the teachers to give us access to that information? I would love to answer that. Stacy, okay. you taking that one? <laughs> <laughs> and then Diana, I, I would love to partner with you in that regard. Uh, so here's the best news ever. The silver lining of COVID would be that learning is more transparent than ever. Um, all learning should be housed in the learning management system under modules. So each week at the elementary level, educators are posting what we're doing in in a module or in the module section. And it should say September 17th or September 15th through the 19th, week four. Um, so as long as you just click into the learning management system of Canvas, head to that dashboard and then click into the class and on modules. Um, you are about four steps away from seeing all of the links that will provide that support. Okay, Diana? thank you. Uh -huh, of course. And Natalia, I'll add one more little bit of information in there. We didn't talk about the observer access with uh, Canvas. So for parents, family members, uh, tutors, uh, anybody can uh, obtain uh, what we call observer access into a student's classroom space. It does require that permission be granted from the student account. And I'll make sure that we post the instructions on how to do that on our website after the meeting. Um, it's pretty easy. I just set it up for my own kids the other day. You go into Canvas and actually uh, grant access. Uh, you, get a, you get a code and then the parent can download the uh, Canvas app, put that code in, and then they can see into that child's classroom. So, and it's really uh, easy to use on mobile. Like the mobile interface is very intuitive. Um, with little to no training, I was able to get in there and kind of figure out what my two kids are up to during the day and see what assignments they were missing. Uh, so we have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. But as a care provider, you'll wanna work with your parents um, so that they can see uh, their student's Canvas screen and then grant that access. And then you can download that same Canvas app plug in that code and get that observer access. Sounds great, thank you. Natalia, can I, and then can I just add one more thing? I was just yeah. trying to put myself in your shoes and put myself in Diana's shoes, who is a mother um, of elementary school sc uh, scholars. And that is, um, once you navigate into the classroom space, that virtual classroom, then on that front page, there should be a schedule for you in terms of here's the Zoom link and we potentially will meet at 930 and 1130. If you don't see when we're going to meet on that home page, then there will be a tab that says schedule. And if you click on that schedule, you'll see when we're supposed to be live with teachers. So knowing when students are supposed to be interfacing with their teachers is super important. Um, so look for that schedule and that Zoom link, and then also just navigate to that modules tab, and that's where you'll find some learning assignments. So I hope that takes care of you, but you know, we're always around if you need anything. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> All right. I know there's more questions out there. Because if there's not, then we just nailed this training. <laughs> Um, and I see the question from the in the chat. Uh, why did you stop using Clever Badge to sign in? Great. Hey, Oscar, do you want to touch on that? Are you able to address that question? Oh, I think he's frozen. <laughs> um, I am not 100% of this answer, but I do know that there was some um, some issues with the login. Um, some students had clever actual badges and then others didn't. We're trying to really rely on a single sign-in using Google as our username and password. So that, that Google username and password allows students to get into their um, school-issued Chromebook as well as uh, into the portal. So trying to keep it as simple as possible. 
Um, I know as a parent of two young children, it, uh, I lost the clever badge several times during the spring and it was sheer pandemonium in our house because, you know, the kids couldn't get online because none of us had remembered the username and password. Um, and I'm happy to report both my kids now know their username and passwords by heart, which is great. But uh, we were really trying to go with more of that single sign on versus having multiple tools or systems to be able to do that. And I think we lost Oscar. He froze and then dropped off. So maybe we'll get him back in here. I have a question. All right. Yes, Julia. Yeah. So we're running a little program in our church building for kids who um, are children of CVCH kids, so essential workers. And we have several kids in several different classes in one room. And one thing I've been observing is kids are sitting and waiting long periods of time for their classes to get through like attendance and things like that. And I'm just wondering what I'm finding in the children is they're just getting really tired of sitting and waiting. And I'm wondering if you have some ideas, some suggestions of things we can do to help facilitate like engagement, but also like what can they do while they're waiting so they don't get so weary of waiting and tired because they get really tired. Oh, thank you so much for providing that feedback for us. We are a data sensitive and data driven organization. We have the superintendent, Paul Gordon, and he wants us to be very sensitive to any information that we receive so that we can make our system better. So what that tells me as the assistant executive director of all elementaries for the Wenatchee School District is that uh, I'll be in partnership with our amazing leaders so that we can continue to figure this one out. Um, this is news to me. I know we love information and feedback, we get better for it. So although I don't have an answer for you, I, I actually am um, taking this all in. Uh, it, it is a surprise to me. So that is good information. Thank you. I would, I would just offer potentially that we do have some programs that students can be in in a split screen if they have the capability to drag part of their tab for their Zoom meeting over to the side and have that parallel screen. Uh, I most likely would offer Lexia Reading Core 5 for individuals at that time because they are building their literacy skills. And that's a program that we're getting from Boston, Massachusetts that was built at Boston Mass General Hospital with the best reading scientists in the nation. So that's a pretty good efficacious support while we're doing that uh, um, in between waiting. But you know, really honestly, thank you again for the feedback. We can only get back when we know that and we had no idea. I didn't have any idea. So, and where did you say that you are? Because I would love to swing by and say hi and, oh, and yeah. support your day. We're meeting in the top floor of the Brethren Baptist Church. Okay. Um, that's right across from Colonial Vista. We have 11 children right now in the program and four on a waiting list. So, um, and we're just offering space for the kids to make sure that they're online. Um, and I also want to say I am so impressed with all the teachers and everything you guys are doing and super like empathetic for the difficulty of this time. So thank you. Thank you for this. Oh, thank you. And uh, if I wear a mask, may I come and visit you someday to just yes. provide some encouragement? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the building's normally locked. Okay. So we'll need to connect so that you can get in. But yes, that'd be wonderful. I'd love it. Thank you so much. Um, there's a question about the Wi-Fi and um, our Wi-Fi disconnect. If I have more than four students, is that normal? Um, our guru in Wi-Fi is Oscar. I don't know if Oscar is, if you're back with us. He's back. I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, is the question, sorry, I don't have the question in front of me. Um, questions regarding Wi-Fi? Yeah, sometimes our Wi-Fi disconnect. Um, I have more than four students. Is that normal? Um, I'm not sure if that's uh, entirely normal. It really depends on who your internet uh, service provider is. Um, so I would contact them um, for more support. Uh, we, do su uh, we do support the devices themselves. We don't normally go and uh, support uh, internet service provider equipment. Um, so I'm not too sure on that question if, uh, I don't think that's normal, but I am not entirely sure. 
Thanks, Oscar. Another question we have is about how, what's the best way to method of contacting teachers? And that person is using messaging in Canvas, which is Bravo, the way to learn a new tool. Um, I think it's one of the best methods. Um, and you know, teachers um, also learning Canvas, um, it's new for them and I'm sure they're very responsive. Another, um, uh, Another method to contact them, it would be, Oscar showed you guys the tabs on the top of, um, uh, the, uh, in his example, John Newberry. There are like parents tab, student tab, and there's a staff tab on top of the web page, And you will see all the staff emails and names in that tab. And so I'm sure teachers uh, check their emails regularly and that's one of the good ways to contact them as well. Third method is to call the school and um, uh, typically they are in the classrooms and then the secretary can connect them over the phone. Um, so those are the options. I think. Another option would be remind, although I will caution that it could be very overwhelming <laughs> for uh, a childcare provider that has multiple children, just like Julia, who's got, you know, a bunch of kids in a, um, in a church facility. Uh, if you're the one point of contact, you're getting a lot of messages. And sometimes that can be a little bit hard to manage. If you just have a couple of, of kids uh, that you're taking care of, uh, I would highly recommend Remind. And it's as easy as sending an email to the teacher and just requesting that the, you be added to the Remind list so you get those notifications. And again, a Remind is going to send you uh, a text message. And if you have the Remind app, it'll send a message directly into the app. Um, so you could do it that way as well. And the Remind app is a very good way to manage uh, and see, you know, each of the children uh, that you're working with and their and their teacher, especially if you're in elementary, it makes it pretty simple. So that would be another another method. But again, depending on the volume of kids that you have every day, it might be easier to just do uh, more of that email communication or, or use Canvas as your communication tool. The question that I see is a really good question, and it's about iReady. You guys are good with questions today. Um, the, um, the question is, does the teacher control um, how much the kids use the program, or is it a caregiver controlled? So the recommended usage for online programs that we um, use as a supplement and they're all uh, between 30 to 40 minutes. And basically the rule of thumb is um, 60 minutes a week, I believe. And so we don't want students to overuse the screen time. But if you're uh, looking at their screen and they're in the middle of the lesson, we want them to finish the lesson um, and not pause it. And then just um, stop if it's a chunk of um, under 30 minutes, that would be optimal. Um, and, you know, do not, do not do excessive time, but the rule of thumb is like under an hour a week. Um, and I know teachers are monitoring the usage and that's not really your responsibility to control, but kind of keep an eye on it that they finish, um, you know, the lesson or the segment. We have another question. I'll just jump in on this one, Nadia, mm -hmm. um, from Molly. Thanks, Molly. Um, she's asking that uh, our teachers supposed to be taking breaks at the same time during their Zoom. We only have elementary students, but they all take breaks at different times. Stacy, do you want to talk a little bit about the the schedule expectations? Sure. So what we tried to do as an elementary team, meaning all of the elementary principals and our teaching and learning district office staff was we tried to create a schedule so that we would have as much learning time together across our community. 
What we quickly learned as well is that a kindergartner will not necessarily have the ability to sustain for an hour as a fourth grader. So therefore, we will see uh, teachers be able to read their audience, read their screen, and know when their scholars need to get up. Uh, there's nothing worse than all of us just sitting and sitting and droning on when we're ready for a break. So that, that has been what has been occurring. And so I will leave it at that. We have lots of scholars at different ages develop, or different developmental stages, and we're just trying to do our best, best to engage our scholars in every moment. So thank you for being so patient with the two scholars that are playing around while the other two are supposed to be on the screen. I can imagine that's that's quite chaotic. So just let us know where you're at and we'll be providing you with some more Starbucks cards. All right. We'll be able to take, I think, a few more questions before we wrap things up. Um, feel free to type those into the chat or if you'd like to just uh, unmute yourself and ask your question in person, you're welcome to do that. And again, just as a reminder too, we will post the presentation from tonight, uh, as well as some additional resources that how to get in as a, a, an observer and follow those steps uh, and some the checklist that I presented on early in the presentation, just to kind of help you get organized. Although a lot of you are probably very well organized by this point in time, but if you have new kids, it's a great tool and resource to have at your disposal. Um, but anybody else out there? And if you do have follow-up questions, uh, I will put my email in the chat as well. I see that Stacy posted hers in there. You're welcome to send those our way. Or like we said, please reach out to your school. Um, more than anything, I think that's gonna be a, an important message is regardless of what the need is that a child may be experiencing. Uh, and you're, you're getting these kids and you may be observing some things um, that you feel warrant a call to school please don't hesitate to pick up that phone and, and give our school staff a call and they can really assist you with whatever that may need. So you're not in this alone for sure. We appreciate all the support that you're doing in a very uh, non-traditional time. Uh, and we know it takes a village to do all of this. So I wanna thank you for that. All right, looks like we have one more question. Talia is on fire. Um, I know Talia, so it's good to see you. She takes care of my kids during the day. <laughs> um, so how are students turning in packets and how do we know when they're due? So Stacy, we had launch to learn packets we that sure we do. kicked off the year with. And um, I don't know if we've got maybe some other printed materials that are still coming home with kids, but um, how do we turn that stuff in? So tomorrow morning, I have a meeting with our elementary principals and we will set a, a timeline for that and then communicate that out for us. It will be that same week so that people are not um, thinking, uh, which week are we supposed to be turning it in? So I would imagine that it's within the next week, uh, but let us get that information to you so that it's a shared message. You have not missed anything. We have not sent the date out. So thank you for being proactive. And a lot of those packets were really intended to help um, students kind of get a jump start to the learning year where their parents were meeting with their teachers and having what we called launch to learn meetings uh, where they could, the parent could sit down and uh, meet with the teacher and learn about some of the tools and just really talk about what the school year was, was gonna look like at least initially, um, some of the expectations and all of that. And, um, so in the meantime, students were working on those packets and it really does give the teacher a good sense of uh, where that student is at. I know there were some handwriting assignments and different things in there for, for my third and fourth graders. So we'll, we'll get those, like Stacy said, back in so teachers can evaluate those. Oh, and Julia, you read my mind. I was just gonna talk about this. Um, so thank you for asking that question. So how long before kids, kids come back to school? This was the topic of discussion uh, very much detail today in the central office. And I can tell you that we're having these conversations in earnest right now. And we're looking at um, what a potential hybrid schedule and structure would look like. Uh, the silver lining right now is, is that our COVID rates in the community are going down. And so we are working hard to develop plans on how we can safely return students into our classrooms. So that is a work in progress. I wish I could give you a, a date, a magic date in which we're gonna be able to open those doors, but it is a work in progress. 
Um, we will be sharing more information out here in the week ahead very quickly about community-wide testing that will be voluntary. Um, that's going to be really important for you and the families that you serve to have some proactive uh, testing so that we can really get a better sense of what the prevalence rate of COVID-19 is in our community. So we have better data uh, so we can make decisions about when is the right time. Um, and we feel good about that and our parents and our community and staff feel good about that uh, in the very near future. So know that that is a work in progress and we are desperate to get our kids back in the classroom. Our staff want to see those kids. Uh, we want to be ready to educate them. So we all want that. Um, we have just some steps to get through, but we're, we're getting there. So um, feeling really confident we're going to be there sooner rather than later. Um, but we'll continue to communicate uh, on that. So just a few more minutes. Um, looks like we have a couple more questions. Nadia, do you see anything there? Yeah, um, there's another packet question for about extra work. Uh, at my site, children don't bring their materials um, and extras would be helpful. Do we give out extra homework packets at the school? Um, I don't know of that. Um, I don't believe so. And um, I think students should be using their your turn books and I ready math workbooks too. Um, that would be the uh, the materials that sh they should be using. Yeah, and that's really good feedback for the classroom teacher and the school as well. If more work is needed, we want to provide the most rigorous education. So um, please just communicate with us what your needs are and we will be responsive to that. Nadia, Director Nadia Bush, during our COVID season in the spring, she was able to put together thousands of swag bags with learning material content inside. And so I just know Director Bush that it is your heart's desire to ensure that all of the scholars have the most material. So I, I appreciate your response and you have quite a bit already. Um, and I would just add to that. Um, I wanna jump back to you really quickly before we close um, about communication with your teacher. So one thing that we were really intentional about in developing our K-5 schedule was at the end of the school day, teachers have time to build home connections and build connections with, again, caring adults and, and family members. So they have a time that's built in there from 1.15 to 2.30. So it's at the very end of the day which is a, a really ideal time to communicate um, through that Canvas uh, messaging system, through email, uh, through Remind, or even if you'd like to just pick up the phone and call them, uh, that's another opportunity to be able to just talk with the teacher where they have time that they're not doing Zoom and they're not teaching. So we were really thoughtful in that because we knew that there was time during the day when people just needed to be able to check and connect with their teacher. So no 1.15 to 2.30, that's when our educators K-5 are gonna be available to answer questions and, and really engage with you um, during the day. So I hope that is helpful. Um, so we're just a couple minutes away and we're gonna be jumping into the Spanish version of this presentation. You're welcome to stay on if you'd like to and listen to that. If you're a Spanish speaker, we'd love to have you. It's gonna be a repeat of the same presentation. Um, but again, we do thank you for participating today and, and making time. Um, again, we appreciate and value all the hard work that you're putting into coming alongside our scholars and making sure that they're successful. We could not do this without you. And again, as a parent myself who has kids in childcare, it would be a complete train wreck in my household if it wasn't for the support that I, that I get. So I value the work that you do and really do wanna encourage you to reach out to schools when you do run into some trouble or just call the district office so we can help you navigate. But I do hope from today's presentation, you were able to glean information and tools that will be helpful in your work in supporting those young people. What you do is tremendously important. And I'll leave it to my colleagues for any final um, comments before we split and move into our Spanish session. Yes, Diana, we, we will post the recording of this video on YouTube that named the same um, as, as the slides and the um, advertised uh, event. Um, and then the last question about consumables uh, for iReady uh, math and reading. Those are the consumables and we will um, 
um, not expect them to be returned to school. And it's up to a teacher to um, give direction at the end of the year. Luckily, we have nine more months to figure that out, whether that specific teacher want the books to be returned or not. But um, I, I don't think it's a returned material. Great. Thank you, Nadia. Um, yes, we will post the recording of this video, like she said, uh, on YouTube. We'll also have a, a link to it available on our website, WenatcheeSchools.org. So if you'd like to share that out, um, and we'll we'll put a post up on our social media platforms too as a reminder for those. Um, we would love to hear your feedback as well. If you want to send an email, I'm going to put my email address here in the chat or to um, to Director Bain as well. If you have any ideas or feedback on trainings that you feel would be important, you want to take a deeper dive into something else. Uh, we'll also be developing some video how to's that we hope to get out to you in the very near future. So keep an eye on our website, on our social platforms and on our YouTube channel um, for those resources as well. And with that, we're gonna close because we're gonna jump into the Spanish session. So thanks again for being here tonight. And again, we appreciate all that you do to support our scholars. Have a great evening. <laughs>